we're going to unveil um, the bust of Archbishop Croke. That work uh, we commissioned from Don Cronin of Ina Shannon, and we're grateful and really want to say thank you to Don as well for you know the artistry and his help and advice at all times regarding what it is we wanted to uh, achieve for ourselves. So thank you, Don, for that. Um, I'm not sure if I can get everybody here, but just for, for your benefit, down down on the ground. Um, we are accompanied here on the platform by Richard Murphy, Treasurer of the Duhalla Board, and alongside him, Tom Dinehy and Tony McAuliffe, and the Divisional President, Frank Keeley. Just a few weeks ago, I have to confess that I sort of took a sneak preview of how events like this might happen down um, in Belly Landers, where they were commemorating um, another great GA figure, um, Frank Deneen, who was the man who purchased the grounds on which G, um, GA headquarters Crow Park stand today. And um, I met Sean Kelly there, and again, knowing that he had a hectic schedule, uh, because he previously visited us a few years ago, and, and we were delighted to have him. I asked him back again, and it's great to see him here tonight. Alongside him is the chairman of the Cork County GA Board, Jerry O'Sullivan from Klein. And alongside him is a, another great GA man, chairman of the Munster Council, Jimmy O'Garman. Sitting alongside him, as you all know, is Oakdron, Common Lucas Gale, Christy Cooney. Just on my right here is a Kerry man, and we welcome him, even that we may not be talking in first terms in a few weeks, but we'll, tomorrow we'll determine that. But Father Tom Looney is a native of Killarney, and I should say Kenan Tom Looney, and he's parish priest of Dingle, and really maybe following in the footsteps of Father Martini, he, he's a great historian in general, but he has a great interest in Croke, and I thank him for coming and welcome him. On my left here, uh, someone who is <laughs> very well known to all of us, uh, he's chairman of the Duhalla Board, Sean McAuliffe. Alongside him is the Rooney of Christa Kuntakorki, Frank Murphy. And obviously no introduction needed for Father Finn Bar Kelleher, or parish priest, Father Frank, Sean O'Garman, and he's hiding somebody in me. Um, Our president, Tom Duane. Father Joe and Father Michael Campbell. And just before I move to invite the speakers, um, I want to thank Father Michael Campbell in particular for all of the organization that he put into the mass tonight, which was so beautiful and something that we'll treasure and remember for a long time to come. So thank you, Father Michael. Um, it gives me great pleasure now to call on Uteran Kuman Lucas Gael, Christy Cooney to address us. Thanks. I feel like I'm a little bit at home tonight because there's a lot of these cock connection up on this stage. Father Finn Bass from Killa, Father Barry's from Middleton, Father Campbell's from Middleton. Father Finn Bar was a curate in Yarn, my own hometown, and a lively cornerback he was too. Uh, so I, I feel very much at home with all these people here. Um, I also had the pleasure of having Father Frank as a curate one time. Uh, my wife is from Carrick Tool. I lived in Middleton for a while, so I got to know Father Frank very well. I didn't realize until the day that he was down there, believe it or not, he must have been hiding himself away. Um, I'm sure that Bishop, you'll leave him here for another while, will you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's nodding, he wants, to stay, he wants to stay around. Will you? Oh, you'll be gone before him. All right, so that's a sure sign he's going to be around for a while. Um, but just, just a couple of words, because I know it's getting a bit chilly and there are quite a number of speakers after me. Tonight is a special night in that you're honouring the past and remembering the past in that Bishop Croke, a native son of, of, of Kilbrain, and remembering to his immense contribution to Ireland as the Archbishop outlined in his homily at Mass, and also being the first patron of Common Lucas Gale. 
an honour that he took with great distinction. And I'm not going to go back over his life either, because it was so distinguishingly outlined this evening at Mass by the Archbishop, who spoke about his love of his country and the wonderful contribution that he made over many, many years through the troubled times in Ireland. But we remember him for his patronage of Commodore Clascale, and that's why Croke Park is as it is today and called after him. I wonder if he was around today, what would he say? I'm sure he'd be particularly proud of where Commodore Cascale has progressed and that we have survived 125 years and are stronger and more vibrant than ever in every community throughout the land and bread of this country. I'm sure he would have taken great pride in it. I'm sure he would have taken special pride in Kilbrain and the wonderful facility that's been opened here tonight. It's a truly remarkable credit to Donny and all his colleagues and all the people in the parish of Kilbrain to, as I say, go from green grass to a wonderful clubhouse in the space of six months, all done by the wonderful hands and the wonderful craftsmen of this local parish. It's a truly tremendous and outstanding achievement. And you, the people at the parish, are to be happily congratulated in doing that, not alone for the wonderful craftsmen, but also for putting your hands in your pockets and supporting its, its building. So I think you should give each other a round of applause for your wonderful contribution. <laughs> you never got Shawnee Gorman to live here, did you? Or to play with you? But it's great to see him here tonight, an outstanding fullback for Cork and a, an excellent coach. And I know he's, he's done an outstanding job as principal in your school here for many, many years. So I'd, I'd like to congratulate Sean on that, and it's, it's great to see him looking so fit and well. He must be treating him very well. Um, I suppose this year is indeed a special year for our association, in that we're 125 years of age. And the key team, and the key outcome of a strategic plan that we put in place since last November, when we spoke to over 8,000 people throughout the length and breadth of the country, there were two key characteristics that came from our members of our association and those outside it. Number one, that we were going to be community-based and continue to be community-based. And number two, that we would remain a strong, vibrant, voluntary organisation. And it's, that ethos has served us well over the past 125 years. And I'm sure it will con continue to serve us well for the next 125 years. And that's so epitomised here tonight by the strong community ethos, the strong community effort that's going into developing what you have. I want to wish you every success. I know you're not in the Duhalla final tomorrow and you're beaten Natalie in the semi-final, but I'm sure you're going to grace by having the final here and do a wonderful job in hosting it. And we wish Bantir and Milan every success tomorrow. I'm sure it'll be a wonderful occasion and I hope the weather is as good as it is today. Finally, could I sincerely thank our patron, Archbishop Clifford, for being with us here tonight. I'm sure he said a little, little, a little prayer tonight for Kelly's success too tomorrow, uh, along with the year uh, and to congratulate Sean on his fine achievement on, on being MEP for Munster, and I'm sure he'll do an outstanding job. Um, for the Archbishop in particular for being with us here tonight, and I know he's administrator now in our own parish, in our own diocese of Klein, and we would thank him most sincerely for the contribution he's making to that. He carries on a proud tradition of Dr. Croke, and he's doing that extremely well. And we're honoured to have him as our patron. And I wish him every good health and success in his future life in his role as administrator and bishop of Cashel. So without further ado, I want to thank you again most sincerely for your very warm welcome here this evening. And wish you, the people of Kilbrin, every enjoyment for the wonderful facilities you're going to have to here in the future. Got a million, 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 million. And next, I want to ask the Cahillic of Cáil and the Moon, Jimmy O'Garman, the Waterford men, and we appreciate Jimmy's efforts again from a very busy schedule today to come to us. He's going to speak to you, but before he does that, I have a task for him. Um, just earlier this year, we asked Sean O'Garman uh, if he could get the pupils of fifth and sixth class in our local primary school to design a club crest for us. We, we didn't have a club crest and we thought again in the 125th anniversary year that it would be appropriate for us to 
do something about that. So I'm delighted to be able to say that we are going to unveil that Chris formally here now tonight and I'm going to ask Sean O'Garman on behalf of all the students in 5th and 6th class to pass it on to Jimmy O'Garman who is then going to formally present it to our club president Tom Duane and from tonight on this will be our formal club Chris. Kilbrin <laughs> The high come uh, in Rory, I was clear, come in low class wheel, I am a sickle brain. As chairman of the Munster Council, I'm deeply honoured to be in your presence here on this very, very special occasion and to assemble here to honour and pay tribute to the outstanding work of Dr. Croak, not alone for come in low class wheel, but for Ireland in general as well. And there is no doubt about it. When we became members of Common Low Class Quail, we inherited a wonderful legacy. Strong, clean, vibrant and healthy. And what we inherited it because we had it adhered to its policies. We are as strong and as vibrant as we ever were in this our 125th year. When you look at it, as the old Ron had already said, family based and community based. But we are also unique. We are unique because our strength has been strongly grown on a volunteers, an amateur organization. And if we are to maintain the strength and have the strong foundations that we have in the corner of every parish and every community in this country, we need to remain amateur. Because we are a huge organization. You don't have to be the wonderful player, you don't have to be the top class referee, nor you don't have to be the top class in the county player to be a member of Common Low Class Quail. Common Low Class Quail is a huge, is, it reminds me of a huge wheel with a lot of small cogs, but each and every one of them of vital importance. And when you look at Kilbrin and the GA Club and what they have done for the youth of this parish, you have facilities that will be modern for generations to come. And to the young people, I would say, especially to the young boys and girls who will use this and have great hours there, respect it. Because it took a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of courage and great vision to have what you have today. And one of the greatest words in our society and has been that has us where we are, and maybe sometimes we see it slipping from us, and that is respect. To the young people I say, respect your mentors in the club as you would your parents. And to each and every one of us, I would say, that are involved in different roles. Respect the people we have around us. Show leadership that you'll want those young people to join us and be part of what we are today. One of the greatest organizations in this country. Our forefathers had tremendous vision. You look at where they placed every field and all our facilities in the middle of every community. There's no doubt about it, what we inherited. We should treasure and be very, very proud to be members of it. And there is no doubt about it, that when the history books are written, and there'll be chapters that will show what Dr. Croke did when he left Kilbrin and achieved what he achieved, and what the members of the club here, and this isn't all about the people who achieved this. This is about the people as well who kept Kilbrin going when there was lean times in this country and poor times in this country, the GA was still strong and vibrant here. And because of the work and the vision of our forefathers, you have what you have here this evening. I sincerely hope 
that in the years to come, you'll enjoy every minute of it. You'll be as successful as you have been in the past because you are the club that have made a great contribution, not alone to come and low class Gwail in Cork, but outside as well. Continue with the good work to the officers and the selectors of the different teams. Be very proud of your contribution. You have done something that you can always be proud of and you will pass on a wonderful legacy when you move on and other people will take over. Tonight is your night. This is the community night, headed, fronted by Kilbrin GA. But it's a night for everybody, a night to be very, very proud of. May you enjoy for many, many years to come and may you have further success, not alone in the playing fields as well, but in the community as well. You at least deserve that. Got a meal, meal of our work there. Jimmy. Next, I want to call on the chairman of the Cork County Board, Jerry O'Sullivan, who will tell you that he has good news for Cork this evening because there are all Ireland champions at intermediate level, and good news for Kilbrin because one of our own players, Willem Megan, was a panel member this evening and collects an All Ireland Intermediate Hurling final, and we're very proud of that, and it really adds the icing to the cake. Um, here in I am delighted and honoured to be here tonight on this special occasion, along with our only uh, Frank Murphy, and it is a very special night for um, Kilbrin. Um, all of the previous speakers have spoken very eloquently about tremendous work done here and it is very obvious that the spirit of Dr. Croke still lives on here in this part of the community because what you have achieved here um, is remarkable by any standards and it is a great tribute to your officers and to the people involved but most of all to the people and the members of the club. Um, Dr. Clifford mentioned in his homily that um, in Dr. Uh, as Bishop Crowe wrote in some of his writings, to look after your people. And I think it is very obvious that the common low class grail in Kilbrin is looking after its people, and equally the people of Kilbrin are looking after the common low class grail in, in Kilbrin. I think that is very, very important. And it is a tremendous achievement to have facilities um, such as you have here, and to be pr pr uh, producing players, as your Cahir, like I said, one of your members is tonight the proud holder of an All Ireland Intermediate Holding medal, a very promising player and I'm sure that he will, that will encourage all the players in this club and they can see what can be achieved and what is possible with the dedication and with the proper preparation and I'm sure you have no chance to do that here in Kilbrin. Um, as I say, we are here especially particularly tonight to honour the memory of Dr. Croke and I suppose, you know, we are all, he said that his spirit still lives here and he is one of the founder members of an organisation that we are all so very, very proud of and that we are all so very, very proud of the achievements down through the years. So, um, as a, the, on behalf of the Cork County Board, we realise and recognise that there was an expense involved in the, the bus to Dr. Croke, and I, we, and I, on behalf of the Cork County Board, will be making a contribution to your career to, towards the expense involved. But as I say, the great tribute due to everybody here, because all, all of this, the bus, all the, the building here, would not be possible without the help of you, the people of Kilbrin. The uh, regulation of our is by Mila Margaret Galea. Next, I want to call on the chairman of the Dohada Board, Shannon College, to address you. And before I do, I want to acknowledge the um, support and financial contribution of the Dohada Board. And at this stage, I want to say that um, it was unique in that all levels of the association, the Umtran has indicated that, that centrally, uh, Central Council or Crow Park, as we probably refer to them, we will contribute to our class here. Uh, Jimmy O'Garvin, on behalf of the Munster Council, has already confirmed that the Munster Council will. And I'm delighted to hear the chairman of the Car County Board confirm that the County Board will, will look after us as best they can. And I sincerely want to thank uh, our own divisional board now before the chairman addresses you for the support and contribution that they've given us um, towards organising this evening and in particular uh, they wanting to be associated with our commemoration of Croke and our 
I suppose, aspiration to develop um, a museum, really, when we open the building in the room. Um, our hope is to develop a museum there, build our own croak. So um, you can put a bowl of us together for uh, Chairman of the Board, Sean McAuliffe. Parliament <laughs> Ta Sulugum Gominik Shiv, Argominik Shid, Usad, August Tane Vasta, August Guminik, the Fauna Galera Stu Halagas Askunda Korkaye, Tane Vagas Usad Asta, August Asna Hashina Galera Ata and Shah. August Kansha Hasar Impression, Guil Kamora and Dr. Unkrokik, and Kair Kakekuk Blin and Kid. Fairgood Blaine, Gamela Skill, Akamora and Shaw. Uh, congratulations to Kilbrain on g- constructing the, these fine club rooms and uh, uh, changing rooms and also for commemorating Dr. Croak. And uh, when they contacted us on the Duhalla board, we were very happy to offer our support to them because it is very important to recognize Croke in his, in his native place. And I also am delighted to hear that there's a few Bob and the rest of the organization and that they're passing it on to, to Kilbrin. Um, Dr. Croke wrote his letter in 1884 to Cusick. And uh, I suppose in modern parlance, if you were with an American company or indeed a lot of the Irish companies, that letter would now be regarded as a mission statement. The GA adopted it with fervor, and it has stood them well all down through the years. And it strikes me that it is as relevant today as it was 125 years ago. The professional corner ways of those times, of the fellas playing pitch and toss, of those kind of diversions that he was trying to avoid, might have changed for computer games and various other things. But I think what, what Croke wanted and what the GA are serving is to keep the young people in particular occupied, to give them healthy recreation, to keep them off the streets, and I think that was never more needed than, than it is now. And it is amazing that 125 years on, his message is still good, and I hope that it will continue for many years. Now, he was, he was born near here, and we are very, very proud to have him in, in the parish. And um, the support of an archbishop at any time, I think, is a, is a major advantage. But you can imagine what it was like in the troubled times of 1884, 30 years after the famine, when, as the archbishop has told you earlier tonight, there was agrarian trouble and there was all sorts of things going on in the country. But as a result of, that, as a result of his support, the GA got off the ground and uh, it got going and it went from strength to strength. And I think... The, the clergy came on board because of the Archbishop, and I think that has been a major strength of the GA down through the years. Somebody else has said it was based on the parish, and it's based on the club, and they are the bedrock of the association, and they continue to be. Now, I'm sure the Uktaran will tell us that the needs of the association has changed uh, with the urbanization of the country, but I think equally when the clubs are formed in the cities, they will define a sense of place. They will decide, define a pride in the parish or a pride in the area. And I think that is the legacy of the GA. That is what the GA is doing, and t- it is very good that it is continuing. And I praise all the officers and all the people around who are, who are helping, but especially you, the public, for all the work you are doing. Now, talking of clergy, I would like to welcome back to Duhalla a number of the clergymen who are who are here and who have served here. But maybe I'll be forgiven if I can single out one, one man, and that's F- Father Finbar Kelleher, or Canon Finbar Kelleher, who spent about 20 years of his ministry in two different parishes in this, in this division. First in Meilin, and then in Kilbrin. He was here for, for 10, 10 glorious years. 
and the young people look up to me here now might think that recession is a new idea, that is something that happened two years ago when the banks got into trouble. I can assure you it is not. When Father Keller came here in the mid-70s, we were, we were in the doldrums as well, and we had two extra problems to, co to cope with at that time. That was high, high interest rates and high taxes. No, maybe the people would still regard the taxes as high, but the interest rates are not high. But during that time, through the energy of Father Kelleher in this parish, that fine community centre that you, you see across the way there, which has recently been renovated, was built. And it was built with the strength of the volunteers of the parish and the guidance that he gave. The field where we stand was, was bought by him and uh, from the Cronin family, and it is a legacy which the club will have for the rest of its life. Um, he, he, he mobilized the volunteers, and he was a tireless maker of money for the, for the club, and he was a great leader to the community and to the GA. And he didn't see any difference between the community and the GA, and I think that is the strength of the GA, that they're one and the same with the community, and that they work with the community, and that's important. When I come to the Duhalla board, I, I was the secretary, he was the chairman of this club at the time, and he had, I suppose, what could loosely be described as a hot and cold relationship with the Duhalla board from time to time. But the one thing I can say over the ten years, it was never dull. There was always something happening. We got into trouble together and we got out of trouble together, but I think he left an indelible mark. So, thank you very much, Father Kelleher. <laughs> Before I finish, there is one, one other that I might mention, and that is the Secretary of Kilbrain, Tom O'Reilly. Uh, every level of the association here who have had dealings with him, they know the immense amount of work he has done since this project started. And I, Dawn and the, everybody in, in the club, they have done an awful lot of work, but without Tom O'Reilly's work and his family, because they have, it is a family effort with him, I don't think that the progress and the speed that this was carried on would, would have occurred. Whether he was looking for grants, getting planning permission, whatever was needed, and then uh, being a clerk of works. I think if he ever loses the present job he has, he could become a clerk of works anywhere, and I think he would do an excellent job. But his work is rarely seen. A secretary's work is rarely seen, and that's why I single him out. Um, the chairman of G Kilbrain has thanked the other people. But I think all did the... Do Halliburton is dealing with him, and I'm sure the others realise how much work the secretary does in the background, and he's never well. He's he is recognised, but people don't fully realise how much the secretary does because his hidden work, his, his silent work, his work when when everyone is he's working at home when when we're all out enjoying ourselves. So thanks very much, Tommy, for all the work you're doing on behalf of the. Now, all, all that remains for me to say is we were glad to be associated with Kilbrain in the commemoration of Dr. Croke, the first patron of the association, and we wish Kilbrain every strength, and uh, we hope they go from strength to strength and they progress from here. So, Gormaha Gil Gilea. Gormaha Gutshan. Um, next, I want to ask um, Father Frank O'Neill, our parish priest, to say a few words to us. And I know Christy alluded to his involvement in the GA and East Cork and all of that. Um, I have an involvement with Father Frank as well, which goes back a few years to my days in St. Colman's. And um, not many people will, will know here, I think, that um, Father Frank was a distinguished hurler. And one particular game that I saw him performing was a Dean Ryan Cup final, um, either in Emily or Kilmallock. And the tide was really going out for St. Colman's. They were clinging on for dear life to the single point advantage that they had over St. Flannan's. And um, a player that we were all to get to know very well in the St. Flannan's ranks that day was Johnny Callan, the Clare senior hurler. And from midfield in injury time, he burst through the St. Colman's defence and fired a rocket on the ground uh, towards the goal. But uh, one Frank O'Neill got a big boss of a hurley, and I think it was probably a hurley that he made himself because he was making hurleys when, when he was in St. Colman's. Um, but he, he got a boss to it anyway and just held it and got a hold of it and got it scrambled clear and referee blew a final whistle and there was another Dean Ryan Cup hitting for St. Colman's. And that was a time really when they hadn't you know, hit the highlights and winning Hartley Cups. So a Dean Ryan medal at that time was really a prized position in, uh, in St. Colman's anyway. 
So I'll ask him to say a few words, you know. As Bishop Clifford Pearson of GA, Uttra and Common Luth Class Fail, Mr. Christy Cooney, Chairman of the Munster Council, Chairman of the Cork County Board, Chairman of the Dohera Board and Officers, and fellow guests, I would like to all of you to celebrate this evening as we honour Dr. Thomas Troke and formally open and bless these new facilities for the Kilburn GA Club. It is fitting that this evening we are honouring a native son of the area who was one of the founding members of the Kumanu class rail 125 years ago. I wonder that those men who had the foresight to found Kumanu class rail, did they realise how important the association association will become in the life of the people, in the life of a parish, and in the life of a community. I congratulate the Hilbrin GA Club, its officers, its members and volunteers who have provided these facilities for the people of the area. It is ambitious in these present times, but it shows how much the Hilbrin GA Club is involved and appreciated in the area itself. Common Luke Class Wales and its foundation has endeavoured to develop the skills of players, foster the Irish tradition, and provide entertainment for people. In an age when we hear that children need exercise, organised activities in sport, we hope that these facilities will urge the young people of the area to become involved in the Kilbrin GA Club and wear the club colours with pride. But being involved means commitment, Discipline. It means being part of a group, being part of a team. But many great friendships are built up, being involved in a GA club, and they last a lifetime. It's about forming characters, it's about forming discipline, and it's all part of building up a community spirit and pride in your parish. I congratulate the Kilbrin GA Club on their ambitious plans for the club, and hope that with these modern facilities, it will translate to further success on the playing fields in the year ahead. For me, Margaret. Thanks, Alan Frank. Um, just thank you all out there for being so patient. We're, we're, we're coming close to, to the final two speakers. Um, I want to ask um, Rooney Kuchikuntakurki, Frank Murphy, just to say a few words to us. Um, Frank was here when we opened our playing pitch behind us here in 1981, so he's one of two links uh, with that occasion that's here on the platform with us, so I want him just to say a few words to you. the <laughs> Common Erin Orbert in Tokata Takahe and Sahan to express just very briefly my appreciation of the invitation to come here on this very special occasion for the Kilbrin Club. Uh, it is wonderful to see our clubs throughout the country, some two and a half thousand of them, performing so admirably in, in providing such wonderful facilities throughout the length and breadth of Ireland for our young people, maintaining the, the great vision that our founders had had, including the man who we speak of tonight in such glowing terms and deservedly so, our esteemed Dr. Croke, the patron of our association from its inception up to the time of his passing. And it is wonderful to see such great facilities being provided here and I would wish to join with all the other speakers in warmly congratulating the club on its initiative, on its drive, and its bringing this wonderful development to, to fruition and to the official opening here this evening. It's something that you can take great pride in, an achievement by a, a local, a small local community in providing not just for the immediate future, but for the years ahead for your young people and for the promotion of Gaelic games in this community. I think it's particularly uh, appropriate also that in this our 125th year as an association that you, the 
people of Kilbrin should honour the first patron of the association, a native of your own parish, in Dr. Croke. And I would like also to join with everyone here in saying, well done to the club in making the recognition that is deserved here in unveiling a bust to this great man. It has been mentioned that he, he, he gave us a mission statement. Many people would say that he actually set the charter for the association. And that particular letter, that wonderful letter that he wrote, is contained in our official guide and has been since the association was founded. It provides an inspiration and vision for us that has been fulfilled by generations since, including our present generation, and no doubt will provide an inspiration into the future. It's good to see this man being honoured here in his local place. May I mention also that that letter that has such a significance for our association was delivered to the, the first meeting of the newly founded association. The foundation, as we know, happened in Thurlis. The first meeting of the association was held in the Victoria Hotel in Cork on the 27th of, of December, 1884. And on that occasion, letters were received from Michael Davitt, Charles Stuart Parnell, and Dr. Croke. And the letter that we refer to here tonight so fondly was read at that first meeting in the Victoria Hotel. And it is the intention of the association, and particularly the board in Cork here, to celebrate that particular occasion, the 125th anniversary of the meeting in Cork, at which Dr. Croke, Davis and, and Parnell agreed to be our patrons. So may I just simply say it is wonderful to be here on a really auspicious occasion for your club to congratulate everyone associated uh, with the development and to wish your club every success in the future, in your endeavours on the playing field and, in, and off the field. You are a wonderful club in a, in a great traditional area for our games and we wish you success in the future. Good evening, Thank you, thank you. Um, just finally, though, he, he'll probably complain to me later for asking him to say a few words. We just couldn't leave an occasion like this go without asking our great mentor, friend, and driving force, Father Finn Barkeller, just to say a short few words to us. Archbishop and fathers and friends, I warned only not to call me tonight because I've been here for 10 years and you, you know, you heard everything I ever said in my life, but I'm absolutely delighted to be here tonight. I congratulate the club on this wonderful achievement and this wonderful presumes and everything and everything looking so beautiful. And uh, I suppose, you know, when I came here back in 1974, well, you know, all I can say, I would say, when I opened the gap down there, I was very, very cautious, you know, because they said, what's he going to do next, you know? And, um, you know, when you think after those years that it has developed into this wonderful place, and congratulations to everybody, and especially to all you people there. I enjoyed my life here in, in um, Hilbrin, and uh, it's part of my very life. And, and I'm still, I'll be honest with you, when I'm still walking the other parishes, I'm still changing some of the players back, full back, and full forward. <laughs> And that we could have beaten Wheeling. <laughs> uh, it's a great, I'm always telling the children in school, it is a wonderful thing to, to learn and to play the games. And it's a great thing too as well. When you go abroad, you can join the club in New York or anywhere else uh, immediately. And you, you get a whole bunch of wonderful people, wonderful boys and girls, and you're at home straight away. And that's why I'm always trying to do that. And once again, I congratulate you. And I'm always delighted to come back uh, to be part of the place because... It is a source of great joy to me now in my old age. It, there's no doubt about that. Honestly, you know, as Wardwell says, often my bed I lie in vacant and in pensive mood, and all these things, these beautiful days I spent here, you know, they flash upon the inner eye, the bliss of solitude. Well, Meg, the last time I was here anyway, I remember Archbishop Croke, who preceded was his grace, Archbishop Griffin, and he was talking about Dr. Croke. Well, I would say, when you go back to, to your palace tonight, will you, for goodness sake, look up at the image of Dr. Croke and tell him that he certainly had not forgotten Kilbrain. And we tell his grace now not only to think of 
Dr. Falk tonight, but also Archbishop Morris, who was so lovely and so kind to come down that night, Lambeau, in 1984, with our own wonderful bishop as well, Bishop Dr. Helen. So now they're all together in heaven, and please God, we hope and pray that we'll be with him one day. So may God bless you all now, and have a nice time for home. <laughs> Thank you very much, Father Finbar. Um, all of you down there who are suffering a bit more in the cold than we are, we'll be glad to know that um, I'm going to ask the Ultron and his grace to head to the front door of our building. I have to make a confession that the ceremonial ribbon is still in my house. But anyway, uh, we, we, I, I could have tried to bluff my way out of that and say we turn the key, but we will turn the key and we'll turn on the lights and when we go in, we'll unveil um, the bust of Crow, the Ultron, and Father Mark Tierney here will jointly unveil the bust of Crow for us, and His Grace will bless the building and the bust. And you're all invited to come through as quickly as you can and take a look at the place. And then finally, we're heading over to the community centre, and I want to thank the community council for pulling out all the staffs this week in preparing the hall and accommodating us tonight. So I want each and every one of you to make sure that you do come in and have the cup of tea and the sandwich of the bun or whatever we have and enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you very much. Lord, we thank you for bringing us together for this official opening and blessing of the Kindred GA Clubhouse and its facilities. We rejoice that a dream has been realized. We come together to celebrate this significant achievement in the life of this historic club. Lord, bless the building and all the facilities it provides. Bless all who are involved in designing, planning and equipping the project. Lord, hear us. Bless those who went out to collect the fundraise and bless all who contributed so generously, including the county board. Lord, hear us. For the club's leaders and managers, bless all those who are involved in the leadership and management of the club centre. Give them the qualities they need, especially wisdom to make the best decisions. Commitment to work for the good of all the members, without exception, patience and good humor to put up with setbacks. Lord, hear us. We pray now for the gathering here this evening, and especially for the two Pied Pipers, whom the children followed with the flag of the 22 counties of Ireland, bringing color and making this a very memorable and joyful occasion for us all. Lord, hear us. Bless those who are no longer able to come to games and, and, and uh, outings for the GA who are uh, laid out. Bless those who are bereaved and of course bless the deceased members of the club. Lord hear us. Lord, you. Loving God and source of all good things, may the competitions and games played and enjoyed in this club encourage good sportsmanship and lasting friendships. May the events organized here bring people together in harmony and never divide in acrimony. May we never forget the eventual prize that we have all prepared, that God has prepared for us all when our journey of life is over. Lord, hear us. May Almighty God bless the building, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Grace. We just ask you to turn the key for us. Just one second.
something that I've always looked forward to, coming back to Kilbrin after being 25 years uh, absent from this lovely place. And certainly Archbishop would be, uh, Pope would be so proud of everybody here tonight, and he is, he's with you here in spirit. And uh, Kilbrin always held a great place in his heart. Uh, after all, he was born here, and it was something that he thought about whenever he thought of the GAA. Now, although it's uh, over a hundred years since the death of Archbishop Croke in 1902, Ireland has changed greatly during the past century. It's a waste of time trying to decide if Ireland has changed for better or for worse. All we know is that it has changed and we've got to live with that. What Dr. Croke would think of Ireland in this year, 2009, is anybody's guess. He would certainly react in a positive way. No sitting down and doing nothing. He was a man who liked to get things done. He looked to the future, not the past. And in no time for moaning or groaning, for depression <coughs> or despair. He was convinced that God had given the people of Ireland a beautiful country and it was the duty of every Irishman to keep it beautiful, prosperous, and happy. There have been many turning points, crossroads in Irish history, especially in modern times. We have not always had someone to lead us in the right direction, to propose a line of action which would benefit everyone on this island. However, in modern times, two great churchmen have appeared in such a leadership, Dr. Croke and Canon John Hayes. They both appeared at a time of great suffering and hardship for the Irish people and helped to lift the people to better things. I have only time this evening to talk of Dr. Croke. He returned to Ireland in 1875 and having spent the previous five years as Bishop of Auckland. What the people of Ireland needed was the opportunity to win at something, to get back the self-respect, and that's what the GAA gave them. The GAA gave the people of Ireland a reason for staying at home to help their local parish or village field a team of hurlers or footballers and thus bring back some pride to their locality. <coughs> it taught the people of Ireland to stand up and be counted and encourage the most important civic virtue, local patriotism. Founded in 1884, the GAA started a social revolution which swept, swept through the country like a wildfire. Fortunately, the flame, which was lit just 125 years ago, still burns brightly. Dr. Croke will be proud of the role which the GAA has played in the making of modern Ireland. As we look at his bust today, we see a firm chin, a head held high, a brightness of the eyes, a determination which I hope will inspire the people of Ireland to greater things in the next 125 years. May Dr. Croke's vision of Ireland become a reality and an inspiration for all. God bless Ireland. Since 
clear things to follow to need for that address. Um, the, the formalities are over, so we are heading across to the community centre. So we want everybody to come and have the cup of tea with us, and we'll have a bit of discussion and talk and, and whatever. Thanks to everybody sincerely. Thanks again.